welcome to Alpha Militaria TV. My name is Richard Saunders. Thanks once again for tuning in and seeing what we're up to. Now, before we go any further, um, I want to give a quick plug for um, our website, which is alphamilitaria.com, because you're on there, you will find some more information on this rifle, uh, on some other air arms rifles, and a whole range of other air gunning topics as well. Right, we should talk about this rifle in particular. It is the um, air arms uh, Galahad, and it's a bullpup, as you can probably tell. Now, bullpups are defined as rifles that have the trigger forward of the uh, the breech up here. Um, and as a result of that, they tend to be um, quite a bit shorter than the conventional rifle. Not particularly, not, not necessarily any lighter, uh, because they still have a full length barrel and all the mechanicals, and they have a full size uh, stock as well. It's just the way that the two are configured gives you that more compact size. Now, people either love bullpups or they hate bullpups. And people who love them, love all of them. People who hate them, hate all of them. So you're either a lover or a hater. I actually quite like them, to be perfectly honest. I think that they um, are very, very useful in confined spaces, hides, shooting around farm buildings and what have you. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk through a little bit about the range. Then we'll talk about some of the key features on the rifle, then we'll zoom in on those key features, and they'll finish. We'll finish off by going down the range and uh, taking a few shots through the gun as well. Okay, then. So the range. So the the Galahad was launched in July 2016. So it's been around a little while, um, and there are two rifles or two guns in the range. There's um, this rifle, which is the sub 12 foot pound rifle, which is actually termed as a carbine. And then there is a high-powered high rifle, um, which is slightly longer and is, the term, and is defined as a rifle, was termed as a rifle. Now, both of them <coughs> are available in either this uh, lovely Minelli walnut stock or, stock or a black tactical stock. And in terms of price, you're looking at around about 1,300 or 1,400 pounds, depending on the stock version and the model that you, uh, that you go for. Now, the 12 foot pound rifle is uh, 698 millimeters long, not including the silencer. Uh, it has a 395 millimeter barrel, um, and it weighs around about 3.6, 3.7 kilos, depending on uh, which uh, stock version you go for. The high powered rifle um, is a little bit longer, obviously, at uh, 798 millimeters long, so an extra 100 millimeters. And that is all in the barrel. The barrel is 494 millimeters long. And as a, as a result of that, it weighs ever such a tiny little bit longer as well. Now, in 12 foot pounds, you can get this either as a 177 or a 22. And as an FAC rifle, you can get it as a 177, 22 or 25. At 20 foot pounds, 30 foot pounds or 35 foot pounds. And obviously, at the higher level, the higher power levels, your shot count will go down. Um, FAC rifles would give you between 40 and 55 shots, depending on which flavor you have. Whereas at 12 foot pounds, you're looking at about 110 shots in 177 and 120 in 2.2. Um, <clears throat> now, I should also say that when you get the rifle, uh, you get two magazines, and the magazines are basically the S410 and S510 magazines. Really, really good magazines, and they go into this little uh, uh, slot up here, and you get a filler probe, and you get a few other little bits and pieces as well. Right, I think that's uh, the range covered. Let's talk about some of the main features on the rifle. Now, starting at the back of the rifle, you have this um, multi-directional butt pad. Now, if you slacken off a little bolt just inside here, that will enable you to move this curved part, this outer part, up and down. And then taking that bolt out completely, removing this curved part gives you access to a couple of screws sort of in here and here that enable, enable you then to put in some angle um, into the butt pad as well. Really good feature. Now this rifle is completely ambidextrous and um, the cheek piece up here, although the slot for the magazine is on the left, it's sufficiently far forward to um, not rubbing the rubbing your face if you're a left-hander holding it up that way 
Uh, and even this cocking lever that we'll talk about in a little while, that can be moved over onto the, onto the other side of the rifle as well. Now moving forward, you've got a nice big generous cutout um, for your hand here. And this bottom part of the stock underneath here is nice and flat and um, gives you the ability to uh, put it on uh, a you know, bag riser or some kind of rest when you're bench shooting and get a really stable uh, platform for the rear of the rifle. So uh, you've got a nice big cutout uh, for big hands. The pistol grip is quite, quite uh, straight actually uh, and has checkering on either side of it. And there's a groove either side of the pistol grip uh, just up here um, for you to that channels your, your trigger finger through to the trigger and also gives your thumb um, somewhere to go as well. Now you can probably shoot this with a thumb up grip. It's not particularly comfortable to do that. So you're better off with a, with a wrap around grip. Um, but that, um, that pistol grip makes that very comfortable to do that. Um, right, above that, um, so the magazine goes into this little port here. Forward of that, you have a, a little bit of a raised uh, scope rail here. Uh, and it's nice and long, so you've got plenty of room to fit a scope. And you can either specify a dovetail rail or a Picatinny rail when you buy this for new. This is the dovetail rail. And I should say that on top, um, I've got a, a Zeiss Conquest V4 scope. Now, I reviewed this scope a little while ago, you may have seen the video, and I really, really liked it. And Zeiss haven't asked for it back yet, so I'm keeping quiet um, in the hope that they're gonna let me, let me hang on to it for a little bit longer because I really like it. To be perfectly honest, at 11 or 1200 quid, it's probably not a scope that you're gonna buy to put on a, a 12 foot pound rifle. But if you're going to be shooting FAC rifles over longer distances, this is really worth taking a look at. Um, I've only put it on this 12 foot pound rifle because yeah, I really like it. Um, now at the back of the, the scope rail, and I'm hoping you can see this, just up here is a little uh, spirit level, a little bubble level. Now, one of the issues with bullpups is because they're so short and yet quite deep in proportion, there is a tendency for you to shoot them sort of off the vertical plane. That's called canting. And if you do that, then that's going to affect your, uh, your accuracy. So the idea of this little bubble level is just to enable you to put the rifle up to your shoulder and, uh, and see if you're uh, keeping it level or not. Um, right, we, let's move forward. The trigger. Good thing about the trigger is it's a very, very good trigger. Nice and crisp, good let off, no creep. Um, and triggers can be a bit of an issue for bullpups because um, you've got to connect the, the trigger mechanism here with the release mechanism back here. And that relies on rods, so a, a rod or rods to connect the two. And because there's quite some distance, I don't know what, seven or eight inches of distance or so, um, those rods can move around a bit, flex a little bit, and that can result in some vagueness in the trigger. Now, I don't know what the exact setup is on the Air Arms Galahad. Obviously it involves uh, connecting rods of some form, um, but it's a very, very well engineered system and the trigger is really good. Now, bad points about the trigger, not the trigger specifically. Um, now I've whined about safety catches uh, being too close to a trigger in the past. You know, safety catches that are within the trigger guard itself I don't like. What I hate even more are safety catches that are actually on the blade itself. And the safety catch on the Galahad is on the trigger blade. That's a little button in the top here and you push it in from the left to make the gun safe and you push it back from the right to make it live again. You know, I, I know I'm repeating myself. Um, I don't really want to be fumbling near the trigger when I'm trying to make a gun safe. But it is very accessible and it does lock the trigger up very effectively. Enough said on the trigger and the safety catch. Moving forward, you have more checkering on either side of the, uh, the forend and the forend tapers up slightly as well. Underneath, you have more checkering underneath um, the forend. And just up here, there is a, a very short um, accessory rail for you to put in, put in a bipod or a, um, a sling swivel or any other kind of accessory. 
So moving forward to that, you have uh, the barrel, uh, which is shrouded for this section here. It's a Lothar Walther barrel, really, really nice barrel. Um, makes this gun potentially very, very accurate. Um, and as I said that before, that is uh, threaded for a, for a silencer as well. And above that is the air cylinder. Now, when this rifle first came out, a lot of people whined about the look um, of this um, gap between the air cylinder and, uh, and the barrel. And I can kind of see where they're coming from. It did kind of catch my eye when I first opened um, the box up. But, you know, I got over that pretty quickly and it really isn't an issue for me. More important is the fact that um, because of this barrel band here, the barrel stays in perfect alignment with the rest of the gun. There's no flex in it at all. Um, and it really does you know, work superbly. And I got over the aesthetics very, very quickly. Filling the rifle is achieved by pulling forward this cap here on the end. Uh, and when you pull that forward, it, it reveals the charging port. Um, now with your uh, air probe that's supplied, you simply slot that into that port, fill up with air, then you remove it obviously, push that cap forward um, and you're ready to shoot. And then if you can see at the front here, there's a pressure gauge that will um, give you a sense of the overall pressure in your cylinder. It takes a 250 bar fill. Right, now the main thing about this rifle, what differentiates it from many other rifles, is the cocking action. Now, many of you will be familiar with side levers and bolt actions that are sort of back in this kind of portion of the gun. The Galahad is completely different. I think it's unique, it might not be, but I'm, certainly I've not seen many rifles that have this set up. And that is that it has the, the cocking action on this little lever down here. Now it's sprung for the first part, if you saw that, um, you kind of give that little nudge and that springs down halfway. And then to fully cock the gun, you pull it back the second stage a little bit, uh, which cocks the rifle. And then when you push it back, uh, and that only, not only cocks the rifle, but also probes a pellet through from the 10 shot magazine. Now, I don't know why that setup hasn't caught on to be perfectly honest, because it works extremely well. Um, cycles the magazine, no problems at all. Um, it's quite quiet as well. And when you're in the, you know, your shooting position, you know, it's very, very intuitive to cock, shoot, cock, shoot, without really having to come off the aim. Um, so yeah, I, I, you know, I've not shot one before and I found myself really, really liking it. It seems like the most obvious place in the world to put a cocking lever. Right, well, I think that's the main features. Um, let's uh, zoom in on a few and show them to you in detail. The Galahad magazine, as I think I said before, is based on the S410 and S510 magazine. Um, and it's very, very simple and straightforward to use, not at all complicated. Um, the inner drum is not sprung in any way. You can turn it in any direction. And to load, it's just simply a case of, there's a little hole down in this bottom corner here. You just literally drop the pellets in, rotate the drum round, and keep putting the pellets in. Now, the magazine takes uh, 10 shots in 177 and 22. I'll be honest, I'm not quite sure on the FAC versions how many shots the 25 magazine will take. Um, but it's, uh, it's either going to be 10 or obviously a little bit less than that. 
So once you've rotated that drum round and filled in all of the chambers, your magazine is, low, is easy and uh, ready to load. Now once you've loaded your magazine, inserting it is pretty straightforward as well. First of all, put the safety catch on the, uh, on the trigger uh, into safe. Pull down the, the cocking lever and cock the rifle. And then you'll see, hopefully down at the bottom here, there's like a little ridged section on the magazine. If you grip that part there, and then just push it straight into the breech. That's it, no locking catches, no little buttons or anything like that. Then all you need to do then is return the cocking lever and you're ready to go. Now well, let's talk about filling the rifle then. So as part of your pack, you'll get a, a filler probe, um, which is this gold color piece here. This is a, an aftermarket. Um, attachment that just enables you to snap into one of these connectors. So once you've connected your filler probe to the airline, pull back this collar here and that reveals a little hole underneath here for your probe to go into. Pop it in there, give the rifle a 250 bar fill I haven't quite got 250 bar in my bottle. Bleed off the, the line, take the probe out and push that collar back. And then hopefully you'll be able to see on the end here, you've got your pressure gauge telling you what your overall fill is. As I said before, the 12 foot pound rifle will give you around about 100 10 shots in 177 and a little bit more in 22. Right, well that's all the main features on the Air Arms Galahad. Next stop we'll take it down the range and see how it shoots. Right, well we talked about the Air Arms Galahad in the recording garage. Down on the range now obviously. So let's put a few pellets in it and see how it shoots. Now the target is set at 30 meters and I'm using Air Arms Diablo Field uh, 177 pellets and 4.52 size. Let's see how we go. On. So I'm loving this little side lever. It's a little bit counterintuitive to at first to sort of cock the rifle down here. You're normally used to pulling a, a side lever up here or a bolt or whatever, but you get used to it very quickly. And I have to say it's very slick um, and feels really comfortable after a couple of shots as well. Now the trigger blade seems a little bit kind of short, um, just the way that I'm address the trigger, but I kind of feel like my finger's dropping off the bottom of the trigger, but it lets off really, really crisply. Um, and it's very predictable as well. Empty. Well, that looked pretty good. Let's go and have a look. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? I've probably got one pellet that's gone a little bit high and right. There's always one that spoils it, isn't there? But the other nine have gone through one hole, you know, not even a fingernail, thumbnail width. Uh, and as I say, that's at 30 meters. 
uh, with the Diablo Field 177 4.52 size. Well, there you go. That is the Air Arms Galahad Bullpup. It's been out a little while. Uh, it is the first time I've ever picked one up and shot one. And I have to say, I was mightily impressed. Now, a lot of people are gonna go on and on and on about the looks of the rifle, and beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I tend to look at a rifle for how it performs and how it feels, and the build quality is superb. Um, it's nice and handy, very compact. It shoots absolutely on a pinhead, it really, really does. And it's consistent too, at 11.3 foot pounds. So um, yeah, it has an awful lot going for this rifle. The, um, the cocking action um, is unique, but I have to say it works very, very well. Yeah, fantastic little gun, really like it. Anyway, I hope you found that useful. If you did, perhaps um, consider giving us a like and hitting the subscribe button because it really does help us out. Uh, but until next time, thanks for watching.